devil snuck in between the C and the E. <laughs> it's called it's, D. You know, <laughs> no, yeah, but it's like it's like tell me, you know, where is this? And I said, was it is it do, is it when it goes when the uh, E goes flat and then it becomes a minor, mm-hmm. or is it when you know the uh, G becomes you know augmented and mm-hmm. becomes you know what where where does the devil sneak in? This chord, what makes it, you know, devil chord, right? The devil's chord, yeah. and you know, and people are like, well, see, it's just like, uh, I don't like popular music now because it doesn't have the same feel mm-hmm. as the classic does, like mm-hmm. a Walter Hawkins. And I'm going like, but dude, I remember Walker Haw- Walter Hawkins is not allowed in some churches mm-hmm. when he first came out. Mm-hmm. I remember what is this got stopped right in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Right, and somebody starts singing, and it's like, oh nope, yeah, that's not gonna be sung here. Oh yeah, same as Thomas Dorsey. They they, yes. they write him out. They didn't they didn't allow it. You know, you're bringing that blues sound, the electric guitar, and the you know, uh, and the uh, the drums, what have you. That that was a no no. Now, do you think the Hammond organ had a big influence? In gospel, oh my God, yes! <laughs> Thanks to Chicago and the church right around the corner, yeah. first church of deliverance, first church of deliverance, absolutely. And the Hammond organ, for those of you out there, was was born and raised right in Evanston, which is a suburb right here in Chicago, right up the, up the street here. Uh, Mr. Hammond and we did a little history thing. We, we're going to be releasing the anthology of gospel music, uh, Doc, Doc Al and myself, and we did a little history on the Hammond organ. And um, without a without a Leslie speaker, you can't have a have an organ. No, you just can't. Mm. Not, not it's born terrible. It. It's just it's horrible. Te- it's terrible. Yeah, and the history behind that is that they they both were two separate companies, and Mr. Hammond did not want Leslie to even get be near that organ. He didn't want it to touch it, so he tried to take Mr. Leslie to court. You know, mm. he was like, mm. well, "I forbid you to to allow the Leslie to touch that." It's amazing. To know that there was a history in time where there was no Leslie plugged in to a Hammond organ, it's hard to to, to fathom that. And uh, it wasn't until um, uh, Brother Smith played that played that organ. Uh, Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy Smith, and they and they saw him on on on. uh, I can't remember whose show it was. I don't know if it was Ed Sullivan or somebody's show, and it just blew Mm. the people's minds that you can get a sound like that. And um, Mr. Hammond and Mr. Leslie, they came together then. Now you can't buy one without the, the other. other. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, and it's, it's kind of amazing the way that flows throughout mm-hmm. music, period. Yeah. Uh, I was watching, you know, a documentary on um, Jeffrey, I mean, Jeffrey uh, Holder. Jeffrey Beard? Oh. Who just recently died, you know, the colonet, uncolonet guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, right. Oh, oh. Yeah, he, you know, he, he just died, and he was talking about, you oh, know, okay. the way in which the French had embraced Josephine Baker. Mm-hmm. You know, the same way they embraced jazz, they intellectualized it. They heard, you know, Stravinsky, they heard the the great classics with inside mm-hmm. the musical forms. Mm-hmm. And it was like, and the same thing transcends it, but here is where we had the problem mm-hmm. and on these shores because we must compartmentalize and divide everything. Mm-hmm. and But no one ever pays attention to, like, it's only divided for maybe. 10 years yeah because in another 10 years it's all the same that's true mm. and so yeah. it's like that's why I can't understand why you have individuals in our age group or maybe a little bit older than you um, mm-hmm. <laughs> who ridicule and criticize the music saying it doesn't have that same sound I was like you don't remember your folks saying the same mm-hmm. thing when you was mm-hmm. this age and you mm-hmm. still gonna go ahead and fall back into the same routine mm-hmm. I'm like I got news for you what was nuts 20 years ago mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's nuts today it sure is yeah yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> like, if it's wrong, it's gonna stay wrong all the time. Yeah. All the it, way. It, it doesn't. Right. There is no exception to the rule. Yeah, I'm enjoying hey, this. I'm enjoying. Um, <laughs> do you? <laughs> sometimes you feel like sometimes, sometimes you don't. Um, Al, mm-hmm. can you think of any organ players, past and present, that has made an impact uh, in gospel music? Billy Preston comes to mind. Billy first. Preston. Uh, speaking of crossovers Billy Preston in fact on my page you'll see a 10 year old Billy Preston sharing the organ with the great with the great um, Nat, Nat, Nat King, King Cole. Cole. That's right. yeah that was a classic and um, that young man started in a church mm-hmm. but he went on to journey and use what he learned from the church and the organ to travel the world mm-hmm. and to piggyback on what Art said about the French or the Europeans, period, embracing jazz. You should see how they embrace gospel. Yeah. Oh. You need to 
Well, I'll go there, over there. I wanted to give up the mic. Sure. You need to go over there one day and just experience that. Maybe mm-hmm. we should plan a tour and take we a should. show. We oh, should. man. Yeah, you if you, think, if over you there. think they embrace it, you ought to see how the Asians. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've been there too. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, it's yeah. Like, yeah. You know, I've taught a workshop and, and, in Japan. And, and it's, I, it's them, crazy to them hear. Japan them niggas can sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Japan <laughs> niggas. <laughs> I mean, and they put it together, and it's like, wow, hearing that mixture of the dialect, the Koreans also, and English. Because they have a, 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 a an overtone. A, no, they have yeah, they have an overtone, but they also have a thing for giving homage from where it originates. Oh yeah, they're not just like play the ones. Yeah, just like the ones. Uh, well, the guys that are in like hip hop. Yes, they have a whole thing of they don't separate time periods. They all have it all together once. Mm-hmm. And if you are truly hardcore, you may not speak English, mm-hmm. but That's you what's but you have to do it mm-hmm. in English, mm-hmm. and then they will go. But in the gospel scene, they will do a portion in English. And then they'll do a portion, you know, so mm-hmm. translate it, you know, back over into, you know, their native tongue so that it can be felt. But mm-hmm. they but that part that's actually in English is given homage to where it came from. I and, have they, the honor. and they will have the show enough gospel accent. You know, mm-hmm. I know I can't day. live without chew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, without chew. <laughs> well they pointed to chew. Yeah, they yeah. Did. yeah they did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if there are any Asians listening today, we want to apologize for Al for well, they uh, love sensitivity. I am not um, being insensitive. That's what they did. I was telling you, I was saw yeah. it okay. <laughs> firsthand. I'm not telling you what well, I heard. Well, because yeah, you can take the heat off of me for a change. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> tell you what I saw firsthand. Uh-huh. Not, not. I had the privilege of doing a ten day workshop in Japan in 2010, and it was the most life changing experience for me. Um, I was impressed in how they received the power of the music. Mm -hmm. I taught two songs, and the rest of our team each taught a certain... They learned 13 songs in three days. Wow. 13 songs in three days. The rest of the time, we were teaching history. I taught a piano class. We had a male chorus course. But everything that we gave... They accepted. They came to classes prepared. The amazing thing was, many of them didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. And when we taught the songs, they recorded it, but they gave it back to us even when teaching it. Then the interpreters gave the meanings. Mm -hmm. And when they got the meanings of the lyrics, and understand translation and interpretation are two different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they had to it had to be interpreted and translated to the right dialect and meaning and tones. Once then, rehearsals became services because many of the people there were drawn to gospel because of its sound, drawn to gospel because of how it made them feel. Mm-hmm. But when they got the message, mm-hmm. folks were getting saved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. Uh, our dear friend who would have been on the show today but I think he's going to come next Wednesday is Calvin Bridges another man who spends a lot of time across uh, the seas yeah, he won't take us no, you, <laughs> almost he invited me a couple of times but I just couldn't get over there um, he, he go over to up. Sweden a lot you know? Sweden yeah, yeah. I like to go there. and if you type in you open your mini. him on uh, <laughs> YouTube you'll see Calvin Bridges with a lot of the Swedes and they love his music over there they just love the gospel in, uh, period and it's, it's hard to find someone calling you the n-word over there, it's 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 it, they it's it's and now I understand why a lot of the artists leave here and don't come back. Yes, I, I didn't want to come back. Yeah, I, matter of fact, Michael Jackson said that he says it's hard for me to come back to America, and he went over there and stayed a long time. I remember. And if he, I wasn't married, I would have came back. Yeah, Bertha Kid hasn't didn't come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Tina Turner hasn't come back. She, yeah. oh, she changed her citizenship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Well, actually, man, there's a lot of guys that was uh, in the service with me. Once they retired, mm-hmm. they retired and stayed. Stayed. They sure. didn't, would not come back And I was like You know For the people who Always come about You know People of the fair persuasion Are the same all over the world I'm Like it can't mm-hmm. be no. Cause you know If that was the case Then people would just Go ahead and come home It was like yeah. you know Better to travel the alley You know alleyways That you familiar with As opposed mm-hmm. to something That's unfamiliar mm-hmm. I'm like They stay because It ain't the same Right Right it, It's not It really isn't uh, The decade of soul Singer and songwriter era Of the 1970s We talked about Eric, Ed, Edwin Hawkins And Walter Andre Crouch, Tremaine Hawkins, mm-hmm. Clark Sisters, Billy Preston, 
Mighty Clouds of Joy. Oh, yeah, the Clark Sisters. Uh, that was classic. Uh, but when it comes to choirs, it's the institutional radio choir. Mm. Climbing up the mountain. Come on. They're, they're, they're the ones that really got a lot of... Me being a minister of music for many, many years, I got my start in understanding choir music through them and the Maddie Mouse, Mouse Clark. Maddie time. Mouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here I come to save the day. <laughs> Leave Maddie Mouse. No, that is... The, she is a... Uh, She's the gold record seller. Back then, that's huge. Yeah, wow. She spray painted it. Well, actually, today that's huge now because it's hard to do that in gospel. Yeah. Um, that was during the time we were driving around in that electric 222. Wow. Deuce in the corner. That deuce. Diamond in the in back. That Sun top. <laughs> Digging in the scene. With the gangster league. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell your age. Tell your age. Uh, <laughs> I heard my older brothers talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma used to drive one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She was a pimp. Took it, took it, took it thirty minutes to park that thing. <laughs> you, had you, know, use, you have to use the force with that. The, just, yeah, because uh, those steering wheels, they you know, if, you, if your power was, steering went out, you were you were in trouble. That was it. it was a done deal. And then they get they had the little ball on the on the steering wheel where you you had to hold it to turn the wheel. That's how bad it was. <laughs> Man, it was the yeah, size of a bus. It was steering wheel. <laughs> Absolutely, Jubilee Showcase. Oh. Sid or Dower, I think they've yes, Sid or Dower, yes. Mm-hmm. You heard some of the greatest. Uh, Jesse Dixon was on there quite a few times, uh, and uh, Abertine Ab- 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 Walker, and uh, you know, all, yeah, yeah, and then so so many uh, wonderful memories. Um, uh, Isabel Joseph Johnson at our show, yeah, the Rocks of Ages and, and Rock, Rock of Ages, and um, we 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 had some of the most influential. Time in the seventies, it birthed a lot of us. Yes, you know, uh, in, in our careers and what we're doing today. And don't forget about Tap Harris and Tap, Saturday Night Tap Sing. Tap Harris with his—I uh, I don't know—he might be listening in, but you know his his plastic uh, his plastic tuxedos that he would have <laughs> wear every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> they were elastic. They were la- <laughs> his suit saying stretch out every week. <laughs> You said something's seriously wrong with Al Carter today. Yeah, and so just today. <laughs> so uh, we moved from that. You know, we went from the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, and uh, and then we started to be influenced by the music of the eighties. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, you could think of a couple of artists in the eighties before we go into our break. BB and CC Winans. Okay. Um, cool. The Tommies. The, the Thompson community singers mm-hmm. transcend all decades. They did. They did. Um, then yep. you had the birth of the commissioned. Mm-hmm. Um, you you began to see more of a contemporary group. Yes. That's the the, uh, the onset of the groups mm-hmm. and solo artists, and that's when the decline for the choir began to take its place. I Absolutely. believe. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it was more so because of marketing as well as promoting. It was easier to take four singers somewhere than it was to take 40. Oh, absolutely. On yeah. tour and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Less uh, complication also. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, had, had Richard Smallwood, Thomas Whitfield, Hezekiah Walker, which, which Hezekiah kept the choirs alive. He did. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Milton Bronson, of course. Yes. But then the commission and the winers, they kept that group Male group, those boy bands together, and that, that lasts for a while. We'll talk about that a little, a little soon. We got our, our guest that came in the studio, and we'll uh, want to. What I want to do, I want to play a song from her. Uh, I think I want to hear Unstoppable. Um, if you can, I went to a concert a CD release that she was having with our dear friend. Um, uh, he, he, he is our interesting friend. <laughs> we'll talk about him too in the second hour. <laughs> All right. If you just tune in, this is the Sir Walter Jones Show, and uh, stay tuned. Worried about paying your light bill? Care programs offer help so you can stay in the light. To see if you qualify, visit comed.com backslash care or call 888-806-CARE. Broadcasting all over the world at urbanbroadcastmedia.com. Delivering love and inspiration 24-7. This is UBM Praise. Worried about paying your light bill? Care programs offer help so you can stay in the light. To see if you qualify, visit comed.com backslash care or call 888-806-CARE. Comed presents the power of staying in the light. Having trouble juggling all your bills? 
Are you worried about the lights getting turned off? ComEd Care programs can help you keep the lights on. Care programs offer help to those facing financial hardships. All inquiries are confidential. To see if you qualify, visit comed.com slash care or call 1-888-806-CARE. ComEd, powering lives.